Right, welcome back to the Average Golfers channel. We're down here at Walsey Golf Club. The sun is shining, it's a tad breezy, but I'm going to put to the test a real interesting one for me on a personal level, and I hope you enjoy it too. I have got a brand new MG3, that's a mill grind 3 tailor made wedge, 56 degrees. The wrapper is coming off now, as you can see. First time we have tried this thing, and I want to find out this. What is the difference between a brand new wedge, grooves never been touched before, and I've got the identical model of the previous year. It's a little bit dirty to say the least. It's the raw version, so it's rusted up a little bit, it's changed its colouring. I can see plenty of grass and mud in the grooves, so I'm not great at cleaning my clubs, and that's the way it's going to stay, because the test is going to be brand new wedge, never been used grooves, versus old used grass filled grooves, what happens in terms of spin and what I'll do is I'll try it out in three different locations and I'll record data with Trackman and let's see what actually happens in terms of performance differences between these two clubs. Right so first of all some close-ups of this wedge I'm referring to and the dirt and muck in the grooves and like I said it's a year or so old. I want your opinions first of all, well two things, are you cleaning these grooves after every shot which we effectively should be to get ultimate performance are you like me a little bit lazy and perhaps don't do that as often as you should but more importantly in that comment section down below what are you expecting to see in terms of differences mainly spin rate got to be the difference surely between these two clubs that's what i want to know so old and dirty versus new comments down below what are you expecting to see in this video in terms of data from trackman Right, so for me, spin with wedges is a real interesting thing because I think we pay a lot of attention to it. I'm not always sure how critical it is at our level. And I'll explain as we go through the video, but the first thing we're going to look at is I'm 86 yards out from the flag. We're playing into this green and it's three shots with the brand new wedges. This is the first time it'll ever been hit. We'll switch over to it three with the used wedge, let's call it, and record trackman data. So as you can see, We'll start off with the new wedge. Three balls in. You can see what they're doing on screen now. I haven't seen this footage. I've hit the shots already, but you're looking and seeing how they've reacted on the greens. We'll then switch over to the older wedge. And these are the shots that you're looking at now, which are the spin and the way the ball is reacting on the green. You've also seen the spin number and the data that we recorded on Trackman for each of those shots. I've not really seen any of that, or certainly not seen how they've reacted on the greens, and I've glanced back and to at the iPad for the numbers in terms of trackman. What I seen from these full wedges, well, there was a lot of similarities. There was very much nothing to split them. The main thing that would have split them was the quality of strike from me. So at this stage, what I'm seeing is virtually no difference between the two wedges in terms of their spin. All I am seeing is variables in terms of the quality of my strike. Right, interesting one next is the sort of, uh, well, what are we, 30 yards short of the flag? We've got plenty of green to work with, effectively a chip and run. Maybe not a 56 degree wedge on this shot, but anyway, for the purposes of the exercise, that's what we're going to look at. The first question is on this, what is it you want from the wedge? Do you want spin, or do you want the club, or the ball rather, to actually release? And that very much depends on the way you're going to play the shot. But like I said, let's interpret this as a chip and run. And again, you'll see me, first three shots are played with the brand new wedge, it's only ever at three shots at this stage. What I'm seeing, and hopefully what's being relayed to you on the camera, is it's very much releasing as expected. I don't think there's a great deal of spin being impacted with that sort of swing that we're putting on it. Then we switch over to the old wedge, and I am seeing virtually exactly the same. So the ball is pitching in, it's releasing and rolling out. The spin numbers again that you're seeing are very, very low indeed. And they're exactly what you'd expect. It's very difficult to generate spin from that uh, chip and run type of shot and from what is just a couple of yards of swing as well. So, again, in terms of old versus new, is there any difference? Absolutely zero at this stage. Right, so we've pitched up in what is our third and final location and uh, a different type of shot again. So for me, first thing to notice is we're coming out of the rough. Only the first cut of rough, so there's not a lot going on there, but first cut of rough. We've then got a bunker to the left. We'd ideally be looking to go straight over that. This is a flop shot, and we're looking to get this ball high. We want it to pitch, and we want it to stop fairly quickly. So the question is, first of all, let's see the three shots whilst I'm talking and waffling on. 
three shots as we've started with the new one. They're pretty much decent connection. The club itself was great to be able to open up and, uh, and, and throw that sort of club under it. Got plenty of height with it. And as you can see, they've pitched and stopped relatively quickly. Um, but once again, is that down to spin or is that down to descent angle? Don't forget, it's the type of shot you're playing that is also having an impact on the way in which this ball is coming down and how soft it's landing. You can see from the spin numbers again, nothing major generated in terms of spin. Go through to the old wedge. And don't forget, I just want to reiterate the point about the wedge grooves. They're, I'm just looking down at them now. They're full of grass, they're full of mud. And we've got this club slipping under them. They're pitching the ball fairly high. It's coming down relatively soft and it's stopping fairly quickly. And it's doing exactly the same as what we've seen with the MG3. And again, from a numbers perspective, this is not a shot that generates a great deal of spin. So the only shot that we've seen spin generated really was from the full wedge. And the other three, it had no impact on the results whatsoever. Right, so I just want to go back to the first shots because we did a little bit of a pan on the greens of where those pitch marks were relative to the balls, where they finished. And yet again, as you can see, there is virtually no difference between where that ball landed and where they stopped with either wedge. The point to mention, yes, we're playing on a Lynx golf course here at Wallasey Golf Club, but we are playing on mid-October, so the greens are softer than they would be in the height of summer. However, everything is relative, and those distances would be pretty much the same, no matter how firm or soft the greens were. But my overall summary would be this. I think the tailor-made mill-grind wedges are absolutely superb. They really are good, and what they've done with the MG3 is just refine it and looks a little bit. I think it looks really good. But that's not what we're here to do. We're here to measure performance difference between the two. They're both raw finished wedges and obviously one has aged as it should do. It's sort of changed its colour, it's rusted up a little bit. I actually found that to be the biggest, the, the more interesting factor of the whole review was how much better the MG2 felt in all of the shots that I played, to be quite honest with you. Really sort of felt that little bit softer. Again, could be all in... Um, in my head what I'm thinking but I certainly felt that it felt that little bit better off the club face that was the most uh, determining factor of why I'd perhaps choose one over the other but in terms of performance yet again and I've done these wedge reviews old v new I've done them in wet conditions I see very little differences in there that suggest to me that as average golfers when you've got so many variables in your strike pattern that's the biggest factor that impacts on your performance and not necessarily the, whether it's a thousand or two thousand revs of spin difference when you're hitting one of these wedges. Anyway, that's my thought process on it. We've tried to back this one up, like I said, with a little bit of trackman data. It's not just opinion led, we've got some data to have a look at as well. You spend some time looking through them numbers, see if you can find something that I haven't had a look, because I haven't spent lots of time looking at this. I've gone from my immediate response from what I've seen out here on the course and a quick glance at that data. Put your comments down below tell me whether I've got this right or whether I've got this completely wrong and either way I'm not bothered I love to hear your feedback thank you for watching hit that thumbs up button and I'll see you all very soon we're going to carry on hitting some balls on this gorgeous day at Wallasey Golf Club